Okay. Like we're I mean, a large no, group of fans that want to see us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I wonder if there is anybody out there that does see us. <laughs> well, I'm. I, who knows? <laughs> you never know. So, do a Q and A or not Q and A? What am I thinking? <laughs> Show and tell. Show and tell, and then we'll go yeah. right to Mary. Yeah, I, I, I guess that's the way to do it, something like that. So we'll have an early day. Cindy, go first. Okay, well, um, so I actually, first a question to you. I know you and Tamerly were working on the um, <laughs> the Croxels and the Websters for me. So is that on a pause? No, it's done. It's just that um, I did page 13 on and she did beginning to 13 and you know her and I went back and forth there was a lot of questions we have because how much to actually remove so what, what we're doing Cindy I mean Mary is that uh, the scholarly work that Tam, uh, Cindy is doing on Pat's family history when she did it she put the citations to each like if she found the census somewhere, she put the citation in the body of the article she's writing. And so what we decided is maybe it should be put into the footnote. That way the body of the article doesn't have all these citations in it. Yeah, or it, number it. Like, don't they usually like number it? And then at the end me, of the yeah, work? Yeah, yeah, let me interrupt, let me interrupt right. for a second. In the, okay. all the other ones, that's exactly what I've been doing is, is I put in, parentheses as I'm going so I can keep track and then when I've got it all done I put it in that proper footnote with the so yeah um, so it's just easier to for the just, lay person to read is if it doesn't have all the citations yeah, in it yeah yeah so it got so it got a little confusing but <laughs> this one um it's, it's just getting harder for me to put it in that and I was thinking I would just leave it because not all of it is in even a narrative form but they volunteered to fiddle with it so I was just wondering what the status of that was. Yeah, so we fiddled. Um, uh -huh. It'd probably be easier if one person did the fiddling instead of two people because then it was at least consistent because I went back and forth thinking, should, should this be in there, citation, or should it yeah. not? Or, you know, so yeah. what, what we were doing is Tamberly and I were footnoting everything and then we'd cross out, you know, use the strike through function right. on the word document so so we could go back and look and see how much we removed i also fixed a few well and i'm she probably did too not spelling errors but some inconsistently inconsistencies like when you put pa for philadelphia sometimes you put pa and sometimes you put p dot a dot so oh, yeah and same yeah. with ohio you did ohio o dot h dot and sometimes it was oh so i just kind of cleaned that up and then <clears throat> Just little things like that and spacing errors, but mostly it was it was well done. So Tamberly, the last I heard, Tamberly said, "When you're done, Susan, I will format the whole thing correctly, like take it all to consistent formatting." So I guess she'll do that probably tomorrow or something because she's doing okay. something today. But it's yeah. it's done. It's just yeah. oh, it wasn't. Okay. It didn't I take us long. Heard. Once I sat down to do it, maybe. I mean, I went back and forth looking at what Tamberly had done because she gave me an example of what she did. Right. Um, and then I looked at mine and I went back and forth thinking, is that too much? Should I leave yeah. it in? Should I take, you know? And um, so, like I said, it's probably better if one person does it. So then yeah. it's, it's consistent yeah. and it's it's not back and forth, but it really didn't take me more than maybe. Yeah. Once I figured out what I was doing, maybe 30 minutes. It wasn't See, that man, long. It would take me forever. Yeah, see, so it was a it was a simple thing, and it was fun to watch. It was fun to look at your your um, your uh, you know what you did do as narrative. I thought it was good. Good, thank you. And I think that people will really enjoy it if they, you know, are interested in. Yeah, that I, I do say that on the citations up. that that I cut and paste from elsewhere, you know, like Ancestry's version of their citation or um family search or whatever if they had periods and not periods and things i left it as 
they did it. I yeah, I was wondering about that. I didn't change those. I left those as is. Yeah, so it was another thing to discuss. It was like, yeah, like DC. Is this a quote? Is this not a quote? Should I yeah. take it out? Should I yeah. Leave it out? Yeah. Well, like DC, you know, District of Columbia. Columbia. Some places they put the periods and some places they don't. And whatever they did, I left. Mm -hmm. um, so I, me, I what when I when I did things, I didn't put the periods, but um yeah, it 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 is tough. And then like like in places where it's census, it needs I think it needs more than like 1870 census. It needs to say something like East Liverpool or Columbia County and the person's name. And then all the details could go into the footnote. But there right. must be something. Yeah, so, so I was kind of like, should I take all that? Because I put like 1850 census and then it would say the, the location and then yeah. all the other detail. And I thought, should I take out the location? Should I not? Should I leave it? Should I? Yeah, and I right. took it out, but what I, but I am thinking, but everything was strike through. So it could easily be added back. Okay. In. So okay. I just thought, I don't know. I, I thought, you know, for a researcher, they're going to love all the elements of detail. And they but need to it. an average person who's reading their family history. They're going to, they may be and, like, I'm going to put this to the side. It's just too much for me. And, and that's why it straight. should be that footnoted kind of thing. Yeah. And my narratives are like that, the footnotes with, but a lot of this, um, Mary, it's like just the facts and not even a narrative. Right. There's a very it little narrative. Like, a lot, it's, some it's, of it's, it's pretty narrative. much done. So you but, can, it, I mean, if you can cross this off your list of things to do. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. That's a goal. And, and, um, and it's all on words. So it's not like you can't change it again. Right. Five years. And, then, and the fun thing is I, I was, okay, well, I can't do any more on that right now. So let me look ahead to the next one, which is Thomas F. Stanford. And I looked, I said, okay, I know on my database, I've got tons of stuff about him. So all I have to do is cut and paste it in. Yay, okay. Let me see, because I know I started it. Let me see what's there. And I looked, and I've written almost all of it already. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's, now it's the parentheses in the, you know, for the facts. But again, because it's on my database, it'll be just an easy pull it down footnote kind uh -huh. of thing. So I think I can manage that one pretty good. But yeah, I was like, my God, this thing's all written. I must <laughs> <laughs> What a shock. I know. I mean, I, you know, years ago, a couple of years ago, but I could see better. I, I could go a lot faster, and, you know. So yeah, and before eye things and before cancer things, <laughs> you know, I guess this was about 2017. Yeah. And, you know, so anyway, it's, it's all written, except I, I'll probably, you know, add a few things and, and certainly um, I can do the citations much quicker, quicker. I mean, they're there in parentheses, but not in nice detail. So all I have to do is go pull from the database, slip it in there, put it in a footnote and move on, you know. Sometimes so, it's good that you've done a lot of back work, even though yeah. it's tedious and annoying and time consuming, but it's going to save you time elsewhere. And then I know Joseph Stanford, the next one, is done. So not probably properly cited, and I, I won't be able to, but, you know, I might list a bibliography um, of places. Excuse me. So then it's just a few things about the spouses along the way. And in those, I've only done minimal research. And so I can say, I have done minimal research, but here are my notes. <laughs> and then I'll be done. And my goal is to have this done before that surgery, whenever it is in April. So I am working. Anyway. So that that was my happy news to report is that I had done Thomas F. Yay! Yay! Yay. So um, and then I'm glad to hear Susan and Tamberley are moving ahead with that, and I really appreciate because that was complicated. Yeah, so it was take it would take me forever. I was sort of played with it a little, and I was like, oh. <laughs> next Christmas maybe. <laughs> 
anyway we're happy to help that's no big deal thank Everybody you has their areas that they're okay with doing and that was fine so susan why don't you go next and then we could we can um, so my my show and tell is that i have three small things one is that ancestry um, when I go to look at ancestry, it gives me that I have some hints on, remember, I have all those family trees that I've, I've got sitting there, I can't seem to build on, they're just sitting there, that are all these Slovenians that possibly could tie to, I know they tie to my family because they're a DNA match, they're only there because they're a DNA match, and I tried to build their family trees to see if I can get them to my to match to my family tree that's my idea is that i will try to be able to build a tree up and i say there's the dna match oh my gosh now i've got a whole wing done and so when i sign on to ancestry it'll say you've got a new record in one of your family trees that i have and i go look and it's somebody who's just like recent you know somebody born in 1970 or something mm -hmm. got married they found the whatever i'm like oh thank you you know <laughs> well i guess they're looking but so that was and um, another one I got was, hey, there's this family, you know, looking at other people's ancestry trees. And I'm like, okay, well, uh. so I'm not having much luck there. I haven't really gotten, I don't think I've gotten any new DNA results from recent that would be anything more than like, let me see, fifth or eighth cousin to my, you know, I'm looking for. So nothing new there, which is kind of frustrating. I joined a... Uh, Facebook group, the Slovenian Facebook group, Facebook group that does genealogy, and they were very helpful. And then I don't, I don't remember if you heard this or not, Mary, but and it might help you is that they have this Facebook genealogy Slovenian group has a sister Facebook group that is for DNA only people who share DNA that are Slovenian oh. and to get in it's a private group there's what I say Cindy last week like 400 people in it or something it's not a huge group but it's enough that it should be something mm -hmm. and so the rules to get in are you have to have us you have to be Slovenian and I had to list a, a a town or a city or something that one of my relatives had gone to had lived in and then I had to be on GEDmatch, I had to have my DNA uploaded to GEDmatch, or I would have promised that I would upload my GED, my DNA to GEDmatch. And when I went over to GEDmatch and looked, they sure he as heck have a whole bunch of groups, not a lot, maybe 50, that are like specifically looking at a certain uh, DNA type. So you might have one of those over on GEDmatch it's sitting there saying okay we're trying to find this family or this ethnic group or this something and you might want to take a look and see but anyway the problem is is I joined the Facebook group for this DNA only group yeah and it's been a week and they haven't let me in so I think it's very dormant you know yeah. so it's that's not a lot of help but I'm waiting. I'm, I was thinking of writing to the Facebook group today or tomorrow and saying, hey, how long should I expect to wait to be let into this DNA group? Because I feel like that's probably my only way of getting through um, the problems that I'm having of trying to find the matches to these people that I know darn well are my DNA family. Yeah. And I, I can't I can't seem to do it. So I, I think that's going to be my next next best option is to write to them and say, because the, the main group's got like thousands of people in it. And maybe somebody can nudge whoever it is who's supposed to be letting yeah. you in. Yeah. And, and if they let me in, does that mean I still have to wait for somebody to help me? Or can they just, or is it something I can walk through on my own? I don't know. I don't know if it's a, once you're in, okay, good. Then you can do it yourself because I have my DNA uploaded to GEDmatch. So I don't know, but it feels like somebody's, I hate this whenever they have the keys to something I need 
<laughs> and they're just being obstinate. Yeah. I can't stand yeah. that personality yeah. type. And they go, oh, I'm just so busy. And it's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm busy too. So don't volunteer to do something and then come back with your busy. Give it to somebody right. else or whatever. It drives me, drives me nuts. You know, when you have to do a group project for school and they're like, oh, you're in this group project with so-and-so. And you're like, okay, great. I got my chapter, my thing all done. I need yours. And they're like, oh, I've just been busy. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. And you're like, I need your, anyway, yeah. anyway rant over, Tamberly, sorry. Dirty, sorry. <laughs> I'm on a rant. And my third thing for my show and tell, sorry, is that I got to get this Jerry Anders thing down to something. I got to get it out. Yeah. All over the place. So um, I've decided more and more is that I've got to get it scanned and make sure that the scans are clear and readable and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then get them into get them into whatever containers are going to be, and I'm going to drive them back to Oregon. So I'm saying I've got to really get them scanned instead of analyzing so much. And I have this one box. I don't know if you can see it. This is the last box of kind of paper, I guess I should say, that are letters that he received or letters he sent and he kept a copy of, and they're undated. So I've got them all in little plastic plastic things and they're all different kinds of stuff some are christmas cards some are telegrams some are all kinds of things so what i did the last few days is i i'm pulling them out at random and because i've done <clears throat> so much scanning already and so much of what i've scanned is is uh dated and i understand what's scanned plus i have a key on my um Everything I scan, I scan it and then I write down like who's it from, keywords, things like that. I, I put it in the, the naming file of whatever it is I've, filed, I've named. So I've done thousands of those. And I have a key, a spreadsheet that has all the key names of all his family members and all these people he's interacted with. I have a key. And then I also have a, a, a life history. So like... He's born, he moves, and then in this year he moves to um, Oregon, and in this year he graduates high school. I have this here, he went to Hawaii to do a lecture. Every time I come across an event in his life, I put it on this timeline. So when I go through these and I sit there and read them, I'm able to look at the files I've already uploaded and use the keywords and like type in the word Birmingham, for example. Somebody, somebody in one of these undated, um, Letters has, has mentioned last year they were in Birmingham. They met him in Birmingham last year. So then I can go over to my key and I can see when when was he in Birmingham? And then I can say, oh, that was last year. So therefore, this must be this year. And so I've, I've gone through and I've identified maybe 30 or so. It's a little time consuming, but this is kind of the last of the stuff that has to be done. For example, here's a fun one is uh, somebody mentions Omni Magazine, because Jerry Anders was in, in Omni Magazine. Do you guys remember that? And that was, that was a big deal back yeah. in the day. So I know that he appeared in Omni in 1981. So somebody wrote him a letter saying, I really liked your article about the impossible box in the, in the Omni article. And I'm really excited that I have, that my submission, because first they put in the, the, the puzzle. And then the next issue, Omni Magazine gave the answer. So this guy said, I was really excited to see that my, off, my, my suggestion for what the impossible box was, was accepted. So I'm like, okay, 1981. This is after this 1981 or later, but I don't know how much later. And then he says at the very end of his article, he says, let's hope this base, somebody can figure out the puzzle of this baseball strike. And I said, aha, a baseball strike. So I asked Caspian, who's really into baseball. I said, was there a baseball strike in 1981? And was there anything later that was a big deal? He says, no, it was 1981. He gives me the dates. I'm like, okay. So this guy wrote this letter during the baseball strike of 1981. So now I have a very narrow timeline. I can scan that puppy and I can date it and stick it in the file. Yeah. <laughs> so it's time consuming. Yeah. But it is. 
because I've done so much, just what we were saying, Cindy, is this because you've done so much work already. Now yeah. this other stuff is going to help get yeah. it down to a manageable, a more manageable level. And I also have a couple files of stuff that I'm scanning that I have no idea when it was dated. And I probably never will, but I'm just sticking them in a file. And, you know, later, if everything, yeah. yeah, I can just go through and say, oh, I found where that goes. Oh, one more really small thing. Remember I had that, did I tell you that that, that we found, um, somebody gave me a, a flash drive. Uh, they had, there was a video that they found in Jerry Andrus's stuff. It was an eight millimeter video. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they trans, um, they they um, made it on a, you know, uh, for us to watch right now. Yeah, they, uh, what's it called? I don't know. I upgraded it or converted. they they converted it to a yeah. to a, a file we can manage. So right. anyway, so I have this video of people hunting two little girls, two little blonde girls that are like a year apart and they're Christmas and it's like Christmas. And then it's all in chronological order. We can see three years of them at Christmas and family parties and all wow. kinds of stuff. And I spent hours looking to see who these two little girls were because you could, you could see that they must be, oh, they had like an etch, 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 etch sketch. Mm -hmm. you know that game they got it for yeah, christmas yeah, yeah. So we figured i figured out what year that was made 1960 and so you know we're going i'm going through the video trying to find clues on who these kids are and darn it <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh <laughs> i find in my file a letter somebody had sent to jerry saying why did you know why i've been so busy lately i'm sending you a copy of a of a video uh, of a video i'm putting together for my family in indiana <laughs> for christmas and it's just some guy some guy that jerry was working with had sent him a copy of his video, video. with and so it's nobody related yeah. to us it's <laughs> nobody related to jerry and i spent hours of going hours looking. i can't figure out who these little girls are there's right there's there's no way and so we were thinking oh maybe he picked it up at a like a a sale at some you know uh mm -hmm some random place he picked it up at and and i thought well then we got to get this video to whoever the family is oh, yeah <laughs> had a wedding in it and all kinds of stuff and i thought oh somebody's gonna want this footage so uh, i think this is was belonged to some some guy who had family in indiana that just happened to be working on this thing and just was showing him look what i've been doing <laughs> maybe you could isolate a picture or two and put it up on the web. I was thinking about that, but he said he was working on the video to give to his family. So I, I'm going to assume that family got their video. <laughs> God. But you know, yeah. the rabbit holes you go down are crazy. No wonder I'm not getting this damn thing done. We're like, yeah. I can't, I, my, my mind says, it's a puzzle. You must figure yeah. it out. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I've got to put these little blinders on. <laughs> Well, did, okay. I ever tell you, did I ever tell you the story of, uh, I was helping my friend move. Um, so we were literally like throwing a lot of stuff in the backseat. I have a Honda Accord. And um, like weeks later, I found this picture of this boy and he was holding up a basketball. It was like one of the team pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I thought it was her. I thought it was her. So I was like, hey, here's your picture. <laughs> and you know i put it on the table and didn't think anything of it and i went back over like a, a week later she's like mary she's like that's not my picture who is this boy <laughs> we still don't know who like i think it was um one of my friends borrowed my car oh. um I, I lent it to her because she had no car and we had an extra car so i was like just borrow it as long as you need to and i think it was hers but yeah, I never like got to asking her. Like, you got this hey, random picture, picture. You got it a little. Yeah, I thought it was like you know. It was her. She's like, no, we don't know who this kid is. <laughs> Damn it, my mom. Every time I came home from the studio, you know, at work, and I'd bring home pictures, and I'd say, "Mom, cut them up and take which ones you want," because she was like the first, just came right from work. 
And she, every time you write on the back of those pictures, the name and date on Ooh, who yeah. these people are. I'm like, mom, yeah. I just picked them up. Give me a break. I just got off of work. I don't care. You write it. And, and I find all sorts of photos of hers and she'll write down first, middle, last name when they were born and, yeah. when they were taken, and how old they were in the picture. And I always thought, oh, this is just ridiculous, mom. You're going way too, of course we know who this child is. Yeah. But apparently not. I like it when they make the stickers, they print out stickers on mm -hmm. the printer. Yeah. You go through and you stick them on the back. Yeah. But it's a lost art, I guess, you know, who is in this picture? <laughs> I wish more people had done what my mom had done. That would have been that would have made our life so much easier. So, what'd you do with the picture? You hope to find still out. Has it? No, they still have it. <laughs> this person who it doesn't belong to. Yeah, and it's like one of those like he's wearing the um, you know the the basketball jersey and holding the basketball. The team and... picture. So your friend probably had it just in an album or something or her purse. Everything fell either out that of the purse. Yeah, either that or um, she has um, shared custody with her ex-husband. So maybe she picked up her kid, one of her kids. And I don't know how, you know, I don't know her kids that well as far as like, because every time we hung out, the kids were always with, you know, the husband. So it was one of those that I couldn't like really distinguish whether it was him or not. Or, you know, so maybe it was their picture and they just dropped it in the backseat of my car or something like that. But yeah, she was, it was just weird. She was like, you yeah, know, I don't know who that is. It, it could be a plot that just solved a murder mystery. Now, if right? it was a British murder mystery, that picture would have solved the crime. Okay, I'm holding this thing for just a minute. Ooh, okay, what is it? Okay, this is the stuff that Ange brought over. Wow. Okay. A lot of stuff, yeah. A lot of stuff. Okay, this Angie's Pat's sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Mary, you get your work hey. cut out. Yeah. I get to oh, well, I got I got Sean on ancestry. Um, oh my today. gosh! Oh really? Is yeah. Both came yeah. in already. Yeah, he's on there um, right now. Wow. He's DNA. On his DNA. DNA. And he on his DNA. the tree. Yeah. They, they wow, got his DNA. Um, he started his tree. I gave. Uh, I sent you an email, Cindy. Yeah, I saw that. Thank so, you. And um, just started working on just showing him, you know, how to add family members, looking up records. We were looking at the 1930 census of um, John's dad, Freeman Seibert, and um, you know, showing that they had Shirley, uh, you know, stuff like that. So. And then his occupation, you know, and then just Sean just recollecting, you know, different stories of how he remembers, you know, his grandpa. Because I guess he died in the early 80s. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So and just to find uh, uh, some of the some of the records and what he knows, matching it up and just showing him how to check to make sure things are properly referenced and all the dates match up and you have to just prove that this document belongs or this person belongs in your tree so 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 he's not leaving it all to you to do your no he does thing. some of it yeah he started adding some of right. it right so, that's great yeah so <laughs> and really that's really about it other than you know just the usual um well, i haven't uh, been yeah uh i thought you had a whole bunch for us no no we got a lot one. I, I have I have more to share in her report. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, uh, but also Mary, thank you for including me on Sean's tree and you know to be able to get on it. Um, when his DNA comes, if you put me oh, on it that, hasn't we, come. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you said oh, yeah. his DNA had come. No, 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 no. They just received it. Yeah, because that uh, that would have been really fast. Yeah. Yesterday, okay. they just received it yesterday. So I said, so well, it takes anywhere from like three to four weeks. Usually, you know, Mary set up a tree for Sean. Okay, she did the tree. So they're they're filling out the tree. Yeah, and I had to figure out. So I just watched and looked up some YouTube tutorials on how to do the whole ownership and right get permissions and whatnot. So uh, yeah, that's no, that's good because then when the DNA comes, you can attach that tree, associate that tree with the DNA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
Roger that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's all findable. No, that's terrific. Um, so I casually looked at Mary at Sean's history or well, Freeman on, and it looks like it goes back several generations, a lot of generations, but I didn't go too far back um, because it's really easy to fall into the trap of, oh, and then that, and oh, that. Well, and I told, brought, I and I also told him, I said, I, I made a habit of every time I accept some sort of hint or something, I always go back to the tree because I said, sometimes it just start, people just start getting at it and dates start getting all screwed up and you just got to do that. And that way, you know, it's all the right one. Yeah. Good to go. Mm -hmm. And especially common names. And the thing is, cyber it may not be the most common name in the world, but in a particular county, John Cyber or David Cyber will show well, there, up. There's a Sean Cybert in Bakersfield. Yes. Yeah. So, so, and there's several John Seiberts in, yeah. in the tree and siblings. Have you ever seen them in a room together? No, I said, I, I, told, I, I told Cindy, that's like the, the doppelganger, you know? Yeah. Well, there's so, only one other Susan Gerbeck and she's a cousin. Never matter. <laughs> same age, Susan Marie Gerbeck too, same middle name too. Poor thing, she keeps getting the weirdest things on Facebook from sure. on my page. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna put a hit on me someday. <laughs> so I did go through this stuff from Ange, and I did like a quick through just to have a rough idea of what kinds of things were there. And I saw some documents, and I saw some things that I knew you'd want. So um, then I went through slower and found documents that I sent in a box to you that you okay, should get Saturday. And it was easier to photocopy and mail them than it would have been to scan all that and try to find it on the computer. And, oh yeah. And, yeah. So for me, anyway. Um, and now I'll go a third pass through more carefully because there's, um, there's documents that are letters from people or, um, and then some of them as the quick look is like, Hi, I think we're related letters, you know? And I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe not. We'll keep it, but probably I won't pass it on to you right now anyway. But then there's some that look like they're fairly useful. And when I look at them more carefully, I'll excuse me, either copy them and send them or scan them or whatever. There are some pictures, not very many, but some. And there's one that's got Isaac, Seibert and his wife, I can't remember her last name. Anyway, together. So oh. McFarland, Mc, something like that. I think, I think they, they were older, so. Uh, Susanna? No, that was, no. Maybe, I mean, I can't remember yet. I haven't memorized it all. Yeah. I, some of it I know, but Isaac and his wife, Isaac and wife. <laughs> well, and then anyway. it's finding out which, like, until I have it on the tree. Right. Yeah, which way is, because I want to add it with, with Sean. I want to add it methodically and go through and uh, not then totally be bombarded with a whole bunch of hints. I'd like to go. I don't know. What do you suggest? No, I agree. You go with what you have and then add the hints. Totally agree. Yeah. But just be organized, on. but make sure you do it when you're not tired yeah. and just take sure. the document, milk that thing, squeeze it, get every detail yeah. out of it you possibly can and make a good note of it, put it on the notes part and then put it aside and don't, how do I say if you kind of go through it haphazardly or whatever then you'll you'll miss things and you'll go did i do that document wait yeah you know so that's yeah. what i would say yeah do your documents yeah. first that's that's exciting Absolutely. and they use all of the tricks that uh cindy's taught us with the document detective yeah dun, dun, dun. Yes, i have a lot of notes on them so yeah so this is the list i sent you 
I made a list of my for myself of what I sent you so that I wouldn't duplicate. But um, two big ones is James Dean's Seibert's um, Civil War, Invalid and Widow's Pension file. And also the Invalid pencil, Pension file for John A, who is his brother, mm -hmm. I believe. And the, you can also send for their military records, but often the real key information is also duplicated in the pension files, especially a widow's pension file, because she has to really specify um, things. And with that information, then you could look up unit histories um, on the internet in all sorts of ways. And there's there's yeah. all sorts of sites. So, yeah. and, and you'll know his enlistment date and his discharge date and when he was sick and, you know, so you can follow the battles. And, yeah, that'll be interesting because I don't have, I, I, I really don't have anybody in my family that's, Data back here. that was here. They were yeah. all over, over in Europe, right? Quite, uh, whoever. Well, there's a bunch of Stanford's that were Civil War, so Sean will get those too. And that's that's in this next that's, week. That's always why uh, John was very prolific with Civil War history. Always like he was. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, he gave me several books to read, which I ended up not. I read one book that Angie gave me while I was there. And then there was one of steel and something. Oh, and I think I know what you're talking about. It's, it's a really big book. It? Yeah, it's a really big book. And I just came home and just never, never picked it up again. And, uh, but yeah, Civil War. He sent me a lot of stuff when I was, um, uh, overseas mm -hmm. in relation to civil war. And, uh, when he was in North Carolina, the last time Sean took him up to, uh, some battlefields. Cause he's, so he's always been like a big civil war buff. And now I know why, cause you know, he was heavily involved in, you know, the family, was the family yeah. and finding out the history and, and, you know, I, I find it interesting too. Um, mm -hmm. just to look at anybody that served in the military, you know, what unit were they in, what branch did they serve with? And, you know, so this is going to be, I know Sean's already like really excited about it. So. Oh, good. Oh, oh fun. So, okay. And then I also sent you, let's see. I say I wrote down Adam Seibert's will, but I don't remember seeing exactly the will. So we'll see. I did see. Adam Seibert's probate, real thick, you know, like, I don't know, 20 pages of that. So I'm not sure Will is right. Um, then James D. and Isaacs and others marriage records in Martin County. Is it Indiana, I guess. And, um, and also, um, James D., I'm not sure, maybe you know, um, I'm confused about the marriage. He was married to Melissa, and then she gets married again, at least according to these marriage records. But remember, I'm looking at these things in a hurry and not with good eyes. Yeah. So when you look at them, you'll look at it. But and and he might have Melissa might have been his second wife. The only one I'm seeing under James is a Susan. And she, she was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a Susan for James D. Susan, there's a Susanna for somebody. Oh yeah, Susanna. Who what? is that? Who is Susanna? She's not so awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the one that directly under James Cyber. Okay, well, we're gonna have to sort that out because there's some confusion there. Yeah. Um, okay, and then I had somebody 
wrote the abstract of James D. Seibert's death certificate. Not the death certificate, but wrote out what it said. Like in a newspaper or something? Or they wrote it for a biography or? No, they wrote it to give to John. Here's what oh, the death certificate said, John, you know, kind of thing. Oh, okay, so, so it's transcribed, sort of. Francis McAuliffe, um, obituary, yeah. Yeah, Cyber. The Francis was married to Isaac. Really, it's going to be helpful to have that tree to look at. Yeah, I, yeah, because the one that the one that I have that you sent me is just split, so I have to find out where I'm at. I see the Francis McLaughlin. And we did, I actually, um, I did start working on McLaughlin because that's the. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Isn't that on Freeman's side? On, um, yeah. I can't remember. Sometimes no, I, McLaughlin's, yeah. McLaughlin is, um, I think, Isaac's wife. Yeah. Isaac Cyber. Ada is Ada Burton. Okay, and yeah. Her, and then her parents, I guess, are, are McLaughlin's, right? Are her parents McLaughlin's? No, they're Cyber. Oh, okay, okay. McLaughlin is a Cyber, I think. We'll get the tree. We'll okay, because I saw <laughs> it. I saw it briefly and I asked Sean, I was like, that's a new name. And he, he was like, I forget what he told me. It was right before. Yeah, my dad the, is, I don't think it's a uh, Ada side, but I'm not positive. Okay, and then I have um, the obituary. Well, that's it. Okay, it is. Because Isaac Seibert obituary and Francis McCullough, if I'm reading it correctly, McCaughlin Seibert's obituary are somebody put them on the same page. Okay. Okay. Um, and then index to marriages um, in Martin County by Fred. And I'm not quite sure who Fred is, but Fred has correspondence. So it's, I've seen the name. It's either Freeman's sibling or Isaac's sibling. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then I sent for my files. Well, I think it's in John's file, but I gave it to him. A township atlas of Martin County. So I have a book here. Actually, it's a binder with a whole bunch of copies from a book called Township Ship Atlas of the United States or something. And over the years, I copied various states I was interested in from the book at the Family History Center. I, it's not, I would buy it if it was in print, but it's just not available. Um, but I do have Indiana. And so what it does is it takes the state and it makes all the different counties in alphabetical order. And then within each county shows the townships. Mm -hmm. So you grew up in Pennsylvania where there aren't townships, I don't believe. No, we and, have townships, yeah. We do, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because well, we, we don't in California. We have counties and that's it. Um, and so this shows where the township lines are and the major cities kind of within the town. And that's really helpful when you're looking at land records and things like that. Um, so I sent that and then a family group sheet that has... Adam and his children from Tuscarora Township. And I have no idea where that family group she came from or who did it. And a lot of what I sent you, I don't have the sources for. They're just there. But maybe we can figure them out, you know. Okay. And, um, and then I wrote some, um, for Adam's probate, I wrote some notes. I, don't know under what circumstances 
And then there's a thing called the Bell Anthology. Somebody, somebody, anthology by somebody Bell. It's from my file. I don't, I didn't run across it in John's file, but it might be there. And if it didn't come from John, I have no idea why I would have it. But anyway, um, and it looked, it was talking about the guys in Germany. Hans, I think it was Hans Seibert or back further. Anyway, I sent it to you to figure yeah. out if it's relevant. And again, remember what other people write. You, if, if they don't have like, like where I have, where it's citing the exact place and page and reference and all that, then you have to take it with a grain of salt because they might've copied it from somebody else, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you find something that has the citation. With them. So was Ange doing a lot of genealogy or did she inherit this from somebody else or what was? No, Ange's, Ange's Pat's sister married uh -huh. to John. So John was the one doing the research. The genealogy. Yeah. Yeah, and I, he did it a lot sooner than I realized. He was doing it in the 90s to some extent. Um, but, and John is still alive, but John is the one. I, yeah, we met him. He, he's having mental issues and yeah, memory slowly issues. deteriorating. So, so he is, so let me make sure I got this right. So John is our Mary's and sister. Uncle. No, no. Father-in-law. Yeah. So Ange, Ange okay. is Mary's. No, no, Mary's. Okay. Mary's husband. Sean. Okay, give me give me a really quick. Sean is is related to, he's the yeah. nephew of Pat. Right. Yeah. But he's the son of John and Ange. Ange. Well, her first John name Sides. is Mary, but it's Mary Angela. Okay. Yeah. So Ange, the name Ange. Ange and John, you live here in town. Yes. Yeah have a son named Sean. Correct. And Sean is married to Mary. Yeah. Correct. And okay, John okay. was doing the family history. Right. And, and so and I was and just John. brought over all the stuff that he had been doing and that's going to go to Sean. Okay, I got it. I don't know where I was. Yeah. No, she brought it. Many Marys. <laughs> I asked her to so that I could pass what was important on. Well, that's Mary. good. Yeah. So let's get it to but somebody I, who can use it. But I think for the time being that that file or whatever I, is gonna, needs to stay with Ange because Ange has three other children. And or it gets all scanned. What? Or it gets scanned. scanned. So it's, oh, I'm right. given to everybody. Well, I'm not scanning them, Susan. That's too big a job. Yeah, I know. But I mean, that would be. That would be a solution. And maybe Mary will do that in her old age or <laughs> kindness or John will do that or something. But what I did is photocopy because that's a whole lot easier when you can't see Yeah. to send it to Mary. And then I'm going to organize what's there because a lot of it is bad photocopies of censuses and, you know, things, oh. you know, you don't it's need. It's all probably it. online now. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't send Mary any census. Because she didn't need it. Yeah, and she'll find it online anyway. Unique things, or fairly unique. And um, and I'm, I will try to organize this at least somewhat to the important things so that if one of Sean's siblings wants to know more or one of the, their grandchildren or nieces or whatever wants to know, it's still with Ange for the time being. Now, at some point, Ange will pass it on to somebody she'll need to. And just 80, what is she, 85, 87? Yeah, she's the same age as John. And, and, yeah. So, yeah, let's see. She's 11 years older than I am. So she's, she's 84, maybe 10, 85, I can't remember, in December. Um, my birthday's a half a year off and it throws everything. Anyway, um, so that's what I think is that she should keep this, this file for now. 
and then Mary, if you scan everything, maybe you can pass it on to Sean or to Todd and Bert and Elena. You know. Um, yeah. Let's see. Where's where was I going with this? Oh, so I am going to organize, and I may do it one binder that has the. I know this is right and this is cool and we need to save it. And then another binder that has these are correspondences and I'm not sure why or how or, you know, but I don't want to get rid of them because they might turn out to be important. Sometimes there's one little clue in the middle of a letter that opens up things, you know. So I know I've lost where my, my thought was going. Look in my world. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's daily. <laughs> If not hourly. <laughs> so it's supposed, Mary's supposed to get it on Saturday and that will keep you so busy. Oh, so I don't know if I, I did write this in my, I sent you a little note, but on the, on the Civil War stuff that came from the National Archives, what I do with those is before I even looked at them, I turned them over and figured out what's the right corner and I, in pencil, wrote, numbered, so like this is 30 pages, say, and numbered them from one to 30 in pencil. Okay. So that, because then you start looking at me, oh, look, there's no, oh, I'll be, and pretty soon everything's all bobberated. But the, they come to you in a certain order. And sometimes the, um, the one page has the front of what would have been a envelope or a folded paper or something that says what it is and and then it goes on to a second page and then there's another one that has the front of an envelope and if things get discombobulated you don't know which front of envelope yeah. goes which, which page so that's why I numbered those I learned that rather quickly that's good so um and it John Duncan Stanford had 113 pages in his Civil War packet. Whoa. Wow. What from? What because, was that? Because he had a checkered military career. And or joined and unjoined? Yes, he did. And if he had gone through the Civil War and stopped, he would have been fine, but he kept going. And and it just went on and on. And then he finally got court martialed and this and that. And there's Ooh. All sorts of Drama. papers. Salacious. <laughs> and, and then, Need to know more about that guy. Right? Well, and then there's a question of his the marriage to his wife, because he was actually married before. So the divorce record is in there, but there's no real marriage record for this. So then every there's all these affidavits from a married couple in this state, in this place. So it just goes wow. on. And so, and that is another example of what to do with the numbered pages is that, um, and I needed to do that with, especially John Duncan Stanford's, is to say what, what is in that page, what's on that page, just briefly, you know, like um, report of, of desertion and yeah. the date and where from. And that's all you have to do, maybe but it's page six, you know? So then if you do need the details, you don't have to flip through the whole darn thing. You can just go to page six. And then if you write this all, type it all up and you put it in your notes or somewhere, then you can cut and paste it into your database. So you've got this, the pension file as a source and this is what's in it per my numbered page. And so you, and I've got that for um, Thomas F. Stanford. His widow got a, a pension from his time at, at, he fought in the Creek Indian Wars. And I've got her pension and it's, I've got that. And it's all in the database. And all I have to do is wholesale, lift it into the report. And you know, then you can record things like witnesses which is really vital. And in that case was because the witness to her marriage to Thomas F. Stanford, Jane Duncan's marriage to Thomas F. Stanford, one of the witnesses was George, 
that right, George? No, not George. Um, somebody, anyway, somebody, Duncan of Fayette County. And when I went and looked him up, he was a judge and his son was a doctor. And because they were judges and doctors there, art, had articles in those family or um, county histories mm -hmm. that I've talked about. Yeah. And there's a whole long article talking about their family histories. Oh, interesting. Which is, oh, wow. Which is James also. So wholesale into, you know, my report. Oh, very interesting. So that's, you really probably have long obituaries too, when they died. It, prominent probably, citizen. Yeah, I probably, I probably didn't have access to obituaries at that point, but yeah, that's a good point. I could add those two because that's that whole Dothan section. I've got bunches. I had we had trips back east and I would go to repositories and I dutifully wrote down all my notes, came home and typed them and they're in my on my computer so that I could just and uh, there's a whole bunch of Dothan ones. So that's it, it, it really, really is important to write down things where you got it, the page. Etc., and it pays off at the end. It really does. That's really paying off for me now. So, um, and like I said, I don't think you need to send for the unit or for the the um, military ones. If you look on ancestry under Civil War, yeah, these guys. There's a little card image comes up. Mm -hmm. And it says what unit they're in and whether they got an invalid pension or, uh, you know, the military and all that. And the military costs a bunch of money and it has, it could have good stuff, but the key stuff it has, which is enlistment and um, when they were discharged and if they got sick, it was going to be all in the pension file. So then you could, like I said, follow the unit history through a variety of ways yeah well i'm pretty so, sure so. since there's a lot probably a lot of uh civil war history that i could pretty much look yeah. at the unit and probably someone's already done it or is you know well there's lots of yeah. pictures pictures yeah. maybe yeah of the unit. yeah um, and stories too remember how i was talking about a long time ago just because you can't find your person's story somebody in the unit may have right. written something and they didn't mention your family members so you'd never stumble across it but whatever their experience was might have been the same experience that your That's true. person if they were had but you would never find it unless you were specifically looking for a unit mm -hmm. or whatever yeah. that's right susan so you got lots lots you can go with with this lots of different directions for sean and does and Sean does. <laughs> and don't forget the, the women, the McAuliffe's and the whatever eight is the Burtons and whoever else the rest of them are. Because each yeah. generation has got a woman surname. Surname, yeah. Who has that I have to connect over to other. more other families, other yeah. you know, that'll branch out. Yeah. Yeah. So cool stuff ahead. Yeah, who knows what you're gonna find. Yeah. What a shame. I wish you were able to find something like this in your. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, but trust me, I know exactly how you feel. Boy. I could, I could do, I could do everybody else's DNA for days. And I mean, uh, uh, history and yeah, you know, I know. much of my own, or at least that side, I should say. Yeah. Well, I've got that preparation to Bessie Blanche Phelps, but maybe after I get this done, I'll have. We're gonna find her. We're gonna uh, find her. I, 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 I swear we're gonna find her. We have to. After I get this Stanford report out, then I can look at all my notes and pull them all together again and say, "What have I got?" Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, that's exciting, Mary. I'm really excited for you. Yeah, and I am too. And I, I appreciate the package I'm going to be getting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm glad to see that Sean is interested. I, I had that. Yeah. So that's very, yeah. that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
What's that noise? Oh, so oh, that's, when that's my bird clock. Oh. Every every hour is a different bird. Oh, what oh, the heck yeah, is that noise? noise? <laughs> yeah, my sister sent it to me, and there's one bird on there that uh, when I first got it, it would scare one of my dogs. <laughs> The room because it's just like a really I think it might be the cardinal but it's like a very loud whistling mm. and, uh, <laughs> so yeah it's funny I was gonna say something. Mm. oh well something went out of my mind again <laughs> but it'll come back someday looking at yeah and what's also cool um mary is that um elena is a is a full-fledged cyber so this is her history too yeah and yes the stanfords are her in essence family because she was three when she joined the family but biologically was the this person oh so elaine so john was married before he married Ange, and his wife linda died in a car accident i think oh. it was a car oh. and um when he married Ange, she had a three-year-old daughter elena and so Elena was the oldest of all of the eight Stanford cousins. She is the oldest. And um, wait, uh, Ange had the child? No, John. No, John. Yeah, John's wife Linda had the child, and she died. And then John got married to Mary. To Mary Angela. It's Angela. Angela. Oh, how could that child be a Stanford? Be in all no. intents and purposes, she's a Stanford. We're talking about Elena. She grew up. She grew up in this Stanford, well, we Stanford slash cyber family. So there's let's see. How do I wait, wait. So Am I putting is her had a child when he married her? Or he had a child with the first wife. Yeah, yes, and that's Elena. He did have a child with the first wife. With the first yeah. wife, Linda. Okay, so then that's how she's biologically related. Okay. Cybert, but she's not a Stanford. She's not a Stanford. Okay. But by blood, but through. But she's a cyber. Okay, got it. But first, I thought I, it was the first wife's child before she married him. Sociologically, she's a Stanford. I mean, and a cyber because she's three when she joined into this extensive Stanford family that's Pat and Ange and brother Mike and sister Peg who lives in town and grandma Evelyn who was um, still alive then for most of the time that Elena grew up and and then also grandpa George for a good part of her growing up although he suffered dementia in later years so so she's in essence a Stanford cyber, but she's biologically just the cyber branch. So she would probably find this really interesting, I would think, but that might be a presumption on my part. But you know, when the aunt and when Aunt Annie and Aunt Margaret would come to visit or tell her stories or whatever, that was the other side. That was the Stanford Clusky side. So yep. So, but there's, there's eight cousins growing up and they, at one point they were all here in town together. And um, Elena is one of the eight, even though the other seven are Stanford slash McCluskey and whatever. So Mary Jeanette, my Mary, is Stanford McCluskey and Smith. I was a Smith. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I still have the, I was just looking over and pulled out the pedigree chart. 
for uh, Mary Stanford. Okay. I think you gave to me when I was, this was when I was out in uh, California with you. Oh, gave okay. it to me. Yeah. Yeah. So she's got the Smiths and the Ruggies. Boskies and the, the Kigallans. Oh, no. Yeah, she would have Kigallans. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully that whole part will get done and you'll get it in the next couple of months. Yeah, I'll show you that. Yeah. I'll show you that. Hello, Sean. Sean. <clears throat> Come say hi. hi. Come sit here. I got. I got to step up and go. Go to the ladies' room. Talking, talking you have friends. a separate ladies' room in your house. That's really amazing. Boy, those North Carolina people are really interesting. Yeah, Hello, we're interesting. Sean. Hi. hi. Nice Sean, to meet you. This is Susan Gerbic. She's a neighbor That's across the street from us. Spitting distance. A little bit. <laughs> from Sydney. Almost. Well, yeah. Yes. Sir. We started this genealogy group, I'm thinking, two and a half years ago, three years ago. More than that, I more. It may be. It was about a year before the pandemic started, right? Yeah, yeah. And we did it around my dining room table. And then when the pandemic came, we started doing it over Zoom. Hey, I heard this thing called Zoom. Yeah. I know. Remember, we didn't know how to use it or anything. Oh, no, yeah. And then it Never worked because her. Mary could join us. You know, you guys came to visit and she was so interested in genealogy. We've got a couple other people yep. that are <laughs> absent today. <laughs> so how's it going, Sean? It's going. Just keeping myself busy. That's I'm really... sorry. We're excited you're doing the genealogy. That's just too cool. Yeah, well, I figured why not? You know, it's kind of neat and you know sooner or later here on you know the way things are going right now i think somebody needs to kind of tend to my dad's side of the family anyways yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah all his work that he did is not going to go to waste which is really yeah. cool you know he it's sometimes it takes generations to get this in order um and so all he did that's very respectful of all the work he did by yeah, he did on. more than i thought and and you know at the time he was doing it, think about it. It was not internet. <laughs> yeah. in nope. I mean, you were like now we could find those uh, some of the stuff like the census in a couple minutes, whereas he probably had to go look at a microfiche and a dark library. Yeah. No, I remember him. No, I remember my dad having to go and yeah, you know, like well, I remember hearing being regaled with stories of that. I was a, uh, I was in. Fort Lewis, Washington, trying to hook up with a hottie named Mary. <laughs> so, but yeah, the because uh, a couple times I was out in training and stuff like that, he used that as an excuse to come out. And uh, when I was out in Kentucky, he used it as an excuse to stop by in Indiana and Illinois and like a few other spots. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. vacation around your your uh, trying to do your genealogy. Sure. <laughs> Well, that and he's also a civil war buff so yeah. yeah mary was talking about how she has a whole bunch of books she's seen and stuff i also had a lot of uh civil war i was going to major in it i thought american civil war when i was going to college so i've taken classes on it. it's very very interesting so much written about it. it it should be really interesting to learn about when you figure out what who where why what branch it's kind of neat because all we got to do is go about 20, 30 minutes up the road one way or 20, 30 minutes down the road the other way. And there's, you know, because. Uh, sure. Super jealous that you could do that. Well, yeah. yeah so, What's the weather yeah. like right now? Are you guys. So nice outside. It's actually nice. It's sunny. Nice. It's about 70 degrees right now. So, you know. <laughs> what the heck? Did and you we might just get have snow a... next week. Yeah. And it's going to snow again next week. <laughs> That's crazy. And yeah. like yesterday, it didn't get above 40. So, so this was a book, Susan, Guns, Germs, and Steel. Yeah, by, uh, is it by Diamond? Yeah. Okay, I haven't read it, but I I know of it. It's very famous. I'm going to have to read it. Yeah, I'm going to have to read it. I've got a bunch of books more on the social history of, of the war, uh, how um, 
the women, uh, there was a lot of women who, who fought, you know, they binded their breasts and they pretended they were young men. And mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Different reasons they fought for, they fought. Um, I've got some books on that. I've got books on, I picked up a whole bunch of books for really cheap on the, um, the manhunt for um, James Wilkes Booth. That was interesting. And especially reading that now with the conspiracy theories that are going on and how uh, tons of conspiracy theories in that time. I'm looking over at my shelf right now. I've got a lot on um, all kinds of different aspects, but the military stuff, you know, the strategy that's never interested me, but the, but the social aspects of how they were able to keep it going and who, who was involved and how it affected the farmers and how it affected the women, how it affected the, you know, the, illnesses and you know all that stuff you know why we got the railroads and yeah that, that's really interesting to me yeah. but um so there's tons of books you, you're gonna get lost in this i think <laughs> i have the brady book the, the photo book um, oh civil war um the guy who took pictures all the pictures yeah i've got yeah. that I've I got think I have that. one or two on that yeah the guy who we went through there was an actual civil war photographer who did a lot and i've got that um and it's cool you could just go right up the road and see stuff yeah i was yeah. in uh, washington dc for a, a a talk years ago and and i was staying at somebody's house and right down the street she goes oh and there's a little thing there where where <laughs> you can go see where lincoln was and he stood up and everybody was upset at him because he stood up and he's a tall man with a big top hat like hey is the enemy right over there you know they're like get down what's wrong yeah, with yeah. you <laughs> you're a target they can see you i remember that but it just like right outside our house almost well we do have john stein back over here so i shouldn't say that we don't got history we got some cool stuff but the uh, california missions the east yeah the east yeah oh, my gosh the, the fault, like, you got the fault line the, fault. the biggest <laughs> fault line up there Oh yeah, yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love living. I love there. going over there though. It's so, I just, I like all the trees, the pepper trees. Like hmm. that's- I, Are I you guys coming kind of, back out here again? I don't know. Cause we're no, still no. going north and south right now between his brother and my, fa my family. Cause we're going to be going up probably next month to start clearing out my mom's Oh, she's moving. <gasps> that's right, huh? She's selling. Yeah. So. Is she buying a smaller place or is she moving in with one of the family members? I think she's going to move in with one of the siblings. There's just a lot of stuff like up in the air, like where she wants to go and who she wants to live with. Obviously, she can come down here like always, but she has a dog that, you know, is. Oh, yeah, you got dogs too. So that's. Yeah. Her dog is just. He's a pain in the butt. He's a pain in the butt. <laughs> I heard that. He is. But, you know, so he just, yeah, he would, and he's old. He's a fragile old poodle that my mom's had for maybe the past five, six years. And, you know, it's, it was her companion throughout the whole pandemic. You know, she really had nobody. She just right. had that dog. So, you know, yeah, we're just kind of hoping that the dog passes soon, honestly. It's all you know, so it's not an issue yeah yeah right right so it is what it is you know it's so we'll we'll figure it out but yeah does this mean you get to get into the cubby hole eventually yeah oh, yeah, oh, heck definitely, yeah definitely yes with yeah. a little miner's hat with the light on She's <laughs> my mom has one of those as i'm actually gonna put a little <laughs> candle in there she has one from the uh, i guess from her grandpa mm -hmm. so because he was worked in the coal mines I think you should play the Mission Impossible music whenever you do it. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> You'd be sweating up there because it's going to get hot up there. It, it was always hot up there. Up, mm. in, up, in, up in Grammy's room. No, the coal miners had so that reminds me of the t-shirts that Margaret made. <laughs> Which ones? Cindy would remember them. Something about the t-shirts that the Margaret... Rossiter t -shirts. The Rossiter t-shirts. Oh, I don't know about oh. that. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, Margaret and Nanny brought them out. I like think something. 
What did they say on them? No, they said Rossiter PA. And it had like the, uh, they said Rossiter PA, they were blue and gold. Um, I, had a, you know, had a coal miner with a coal miner's helmet on. So. Okay. Was, I don't think so. I don't think we got them. Hmm. Sometimes we get not quite in the yeah, I just thought you might remember it. That's all. I, no, I, I don't. Some pictures were around. No, I don't. When, how old were you when this happened? Five, seven, somewhere in there. Oh. Seven, maybe, yeah. Just like back in the seven. I mean, here, I'll go back to the middle. Well, I, Sean, you, yeah, Sean you has, um, well, we both received. I, I think I got a glimpse of it. In so, from, Sean, hey, the you photo were, album. Sean, you were five when we got married, or when I married Pat. And Sprinkles, yeah. Yeah. I was, well, you were five. Aww. Yeah. Did he hold the ring? No, no. Yeah, yeah. Did I? <clears throat> I, don't, I don't remember if I did or didn't. What? I, I just remember bagpipes. Um, yes. You had bagpipes at your wedding, no. Cindy? See? Yeah. Okay, there we fun. go. Aww. So they, they decided, the that, they decided that, that I should have bagpipes at my wedding, my sister-in-laws and Pat and Elvis. And I was horrified at the idea. Now it would have been fine, but then I-, I Why? Really oh, here's the, the picture. Uh, oh. Oh my God. Huh. Like Wait, let me get my magnifier. It's also gonna be on the video so you can see it. Yeah. No, I don't remember those. Oh, Sean was a ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Always a ginger. Well, still Never call a ginger ginger ginger. Only a ginger can call another person ginger ginger. That's well. I'm a ginger kind of. I read highlights, so sort no, of. No, no, you're not a real name. No. <laughs> Doesn't work well, that way. Let me finish the bagpipes. Story. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us the bagpipes. They decided I should have bagpipes, and I was horrified at the idea. And I just was in dread they were going to somehow manage bed by uh, bagpipes at my wedding, but. You know, I thought I'd convince them not to. But on the rehearsal night, Friday, you know, the night before, we're in the middle of rehearsal and the doors at the back of the church fling open and a bagpiper comes <laughs> so, But that was rehearsal dinner and it was fine and it was fun and that was different. And I looked back and laughed, but um, I was terrified they were going to have bagpipers show up my wedding <laughs> so they didn't it was only the they rehearsal didn't. they just did it at the rehearsal yeah oh. so so that's what you must remember sean yeah well that and it's you know we talk about that every time we talk about your wedding anyways so <laughs> that was <laughs> <Just> often <laughs> that was spencer myers dr spencer myers was the bagpipe guy so he was my ophthalmologist too, but huh. <laughs> you know. Oh, you know. The, these guys are tricky in that family. And <laughs> I'm not very good at being teased. And that's just how it is. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Um, so the, so so all of your stories also need to be written down, like when you talk about your marriage and you know what you know right in there where oh, you in. this haughty mary that you were checking out <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Freedom. I don't, you were off in the ladies room when he was telling that story. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to watch the video to, to, to know what he was saying but this haughty i don't know who she is but I was talking uh, about my ex oh <laughs> <crazy>. <laughs> anyway it's very cool that's cool. So I'm glad you're doing it. Yeah. So, so well, I haven't hit yeah. any snags yet because I, I know that I have a ways to go just by looking before we even started the tree. So, um, but yeah. And there's a lot of good stuff on Ancestry that you'll be able to get. I saw oh, that. Read your photos. Scan your photos. Yeah. Upload the photos. Yeah. Let's scan. Well, yeah. A what? The, yeah, there's that one of your there's that one of your dad. Well, there's one of my dad in Italy. There's, yeah, there's one of his dad in Italy when he was in the army. Oh, uh, yeah. 
like yeah. dead sent me I, somewhere around dad sent me like a picture of Cecil Cyber. Uh, Cecil, Cecil Burton. Cecil Burton. Yeah. He has a picture Is of it? Cecil. Yeah. Burton. Who's Cecil? Oh yeah, I've got a picture. There's a picture in, in the file of a Cecil. What who was Cecil? Uh, so I think it was my dad's uncle. Um, Richard, Robert. Robert. So that would be uh, so I, I, if I don't remember it, I'm, I'm not really 100 percent sure. I want to say it was a bird, you know, Cecil Burton. So, so it'd be uh, Ada's. <laughs> Brother yeah. Ada's a relative of Ada's. Yeah, exactly. So okay. I'm gonna have to get in there and muddle some <clears throat> stuff. And I wonder how much John could recollect since it is like long-term memory. He might have. He might have. Um, yeah, and maybe catch him on a good day maybe. and just record him, you know what I mean? Yeah. To where yeah, he, absolutely, you know, yeah. Yeah, know. he was when Ange brought it over and he was here and she and I talked in um, code speak, you know, where you kind of talked about things but didn't talk about things overtly. Mm -hmm. And the inference being that she was bringing stuff and I would take a look and, you know, I did just really vague, but she knew what I was saying and I knew what she was saying. And John just sat there, you know, yeah. and, and we deliberately didn't go into it any read detail. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. You know Just be yeah, careful too, because that might trigger something too. Because I know that, you know, some, I don't know. Who knows? I, there's something like you could talk to your dad. Maybe he can. Yeah, no, that's something we can do. Yeah. Um, talk to talk to him. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I think, you know, with the way dad is on that, um, and just to make sure that everything's, you know, that, that I think that would be something that definitely would hit them up when we're there, you know, next time I'm out. Yeah. And so I need to figure out when that's going to be. Yeah. And then uh, just kind of get all the juggling done here and then go ahead and get out there. And do some catching up. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't think I'm the person to do it. No, I, 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 I don't know. It's it's interesting with my dad right now. I mean, with the Alzheimer's and everything. He, um, when we were when he was out for Alex's wedding out here. Um, right. I'm sorry. Just come a little closer. Oh, okay. There's a cat there. Yeah, my cat but, uh, is laying down next to me. So, <laughs> but uh, special. But anyways, when we were out for Alex's wedding, I, I, it, it was really funny because there were times where he didn't know who I was, you know, and he was nice and friendly towards me, but he, he had no clue who I was. And so, you know, I, me being the facetious guy I am, I went ahead and sit there and it's like, oh, well, no, hey, you know, hey, you know, it, you know, it's a cyber party. What can I say? You know, and he's like, oh, really? You know, and it's like, yeah, you know, I'm out here, you know, you know, my, you know, I started talking about my grandma and my, you know. My granddad and being, you know, my granddad being the joker he was, you know, I'd, I'd use that kind of humor with him. Uh -huh. and, um, that worked out pretty good. But then when I went ahead and basically told him, oh, yeah, no, hey, you know, hey, I don't, you know, I'm not sure if you know we've met, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Sean, I'm, I'm Freeman and Ada's grandson. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, you know, they don't, you know, so we had, you know, we'd have a nice little <laughs> back and forth about that. Or I'd talk about, you know, being like, you know, Shirley's nephew, you know, I'd introduce myself again, you know, like 10 minutes later and introduce myself as like Shirley's nephew. And he'd be like, oh, well, you know, here, it's nice to meet you. Uh -huh. uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. You know, it gets, yeah, you know, but yeah. And then like about an hour later, we'd be sitting talking having you know he'd be showing me pictures of of grandma and like you know his his old car and when he you know he carries around a lot of photos and stuff so he likes talking about those kind of things so that's probably the angle of attack i'll use on yeah him. right yeah. having the photos too to be able to yeah for the I moment think he's long trying to hang on to the memories well, long-term memory is actually really good he remembers a lot of things it's just sometimes it gets jumbled up yeah in the short term well you know, the, the big thing I have to worry about a lot of times is just making sure that he, you know, that he gets to bed and he's, that it still doesn't mess with the routine at all. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and whenever he gets upset, that's I worry about the routine on that because they are it, it, it's a disruption. But uh, right, yay, yay. So yeah, well. Not to bring you all down with the talk of my no, day. No, it's it's a sad, sad thing. Well, it just shows you the importance of of you know having them now and having the yeah. and if you can get those memories written down and or recorded or something. I mean, I was uh, I cannot remember. My dad died in eighty nine. I cannot remember what he sounded like. He was I was twenty seven, and I still have no memory of his voice. And I have, and I would. I would trade almost anything to be able to have a recording of his voice. And it hurts me so bad because we had lots of recordings. So my brother just taped over him with like a VHS and, and it just drives me. So it's, it just feels cruel, you know, now because. How about what, how about when you find out that your sister's cat peed all over everything? Oh, don't even go to the, no. the cat. Pee. Pee. I go back to cat everything. pee. Oh, that's yeah. just. Yeah, no, I mean, it worries me because to the point to oh. the point where it's the 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 urine has turned like oh geez it's crystallized yeah like everything that I grew oh, up with all my a lot of stuff like that um, my mom kept down in the cellar it like my sister and her husband had to come over and literally clear everything out and kilt it like seal it like four or five times because oh, that's yeah awful. Awesome. Well, it's, it's, you know, again, it goes to getting it scanned and putting it someplace safe. My uh, friend of mine on Facebook, she had a, I think I told you guys this, she had a storage locker up in uh, Sacramento or no San Jose area and the sewage pump backed up at the facility. And uh, there was like six inches of water throughout her storage locker. And she had everything in cardboard boxes, all her family pictures, Mm -hmm. scrapbooks, everything oh. just, and they were at the bottom of the pile so and you know how cardboard is so it yeah. just sucked through so there was all these pictures of her photos she had them laid out all over and they were just so thrashed and damaged and you're you're like you know get yeah. <laughs> well don't put them in carbon boxes in a storage locker somewhere that's what say yeah. jerry andrus project they've just been sitting in a storage locker in a, in a cardboard boxes all this time oh it drives don't get me started (laughs) you know how i feel about this taking respecting it and getting getting it on story it reminds me of uh tamberly you know tamberly she she keeps saying her dad will say oh i don't remember anything oh no i don't know anything and then she'll say dad can you tell me about so and so and he's like oh yeah let me tell you (laughs) he's got it all down i keep saying record that on zoom because it's important to have that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just talking to myself, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bad cat too. I'm trying to figure out who to send her to. I'm about ready to strangle her, but I won't because I love my cat. But I'm <laughs> sorry. luckily, these cats that we have have been awesome. They've never soiled in the house anywhere. Um, they just love to scratch things. Oh, well, I'll put up the scratching. Can I, I have scratching posts? But, uh, they have scratching posts, but they decided to take a, a whole door jam and that we're going to have to replace. We're just not touching it. It's just, oh, there, uh, it's theirs. And it's all the way down to like the end of the wood now. <laughs> I'll trade you. I'll trade you, please. <laughs> and these are the last cats that we're going to have for a while just because of that. Because I have a leather couch that they kind of helped scratch up, but I had another stray cat that I had to end up surrender to because I just, she was feral and she scratched up my $3,000 leather couch. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, Oh, isn't it awful? Yeah. Try to give them a chance and then they, you know, so yeah. Yeah. It's really what it is. No more cats. As much as I'd love to have more animals, and I see them all the time, and ads, and people giving them away and stuff. No, I know. I say when my cats, all all three of my cats are, we got them at the same week, so they're all the same age as each other. Two of them are siblings, and I think, will I get more cats when these are done? And I think, yeah, I probably will. But well, these <sighs> cats were were um, feral cats on my friend's property. 
that were um, spayed already. And there was like 20 or 30 of them. So Ooh, imagine going to like this straight up redneck trailer <laughs> with like trash everywhere. Uh, I will not lie. And then getting out of the car and all these black cats just start coming out. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, it was like like that. So we rescued two of them, and uh, you're good yeah. people. Well, the lady ended up, you know, passing passing away. So now it's like I have to keep these cats till the end. So yeah, and they, they're spoiled. They are very well taken care of, and yeah, they're fat. Yeah, but they're 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 uh, spoiled. To say the least. When we leave for our walks in the morning, we put on cat videos on YouTube. Oh, my cats wouldn't even look at a video. They they don't even. Yeah, and she waits for me. She waits for me when I come home, and then she always sits on the cat tree. And yeah, she's just a. She's always with me. Always with me. Yeah. Yep. She might, she's sitting right there with me. She's I getting older too. She's I have one sleeping in the sunshine here. He's a good kitty. But the problem is, is whenever you, I have to ice, I, I'm having to isolate this one cat and I'm having to isolate it further and further and further. And when I do that, I'm also isolating the other cats because you can't have one cat have free reign of the house. Then the other cat will have free reign of the house. So, well, these cats for the most part get along. Um, so we're, and, and the dogs get along with them and, um, that was not always the case. Harry killed one of our kittens. Yeah, right in the other room, killed it. She walked up to him. Oh, and she, no. She him and he just snapped at her and she died in my kitchen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was horrible. Gee, this is yeah. another positive conversation. Yeah. <laughs> are, we all, are we all done? I think we're kind of done he's, for the day. He's, yeah, he's good, around, yeah, he's good around. He's good around these, these cats. Like, they... they this missy she dotes over him and uh but yeah he just didn't like that kitten and he he killed her yep yeah he sure did it was it was horrible well we gotta get you out here mary we'll have a big party yeah 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 you can come too sean <laughs> oh, it's very considerate of you <laughs> i guess he could come out too <laughs> party all right you guys i'm gonna end this because I'm going to go have lunch. Yeah, yeah, I'm about ready to cook up some tofu. So I don't know for sure what we'll do next week, but we'll rock. Maybe we'll something up. will have happened. Yeah. yeah. I'll, well, Maybe. I'm going to work on. We'll have a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'm going to work here. on the tree and then start sorting through the paperwork. So I'll have a report because next week I should. What's next week? I got to make sure I don't have it. Should be the 17th, I think. I uh, should be good then. Yeah. yeah. Because it's okay. Wednesday. Yeah, I'll be here. Okay. All right. All right. Bye, All everybody. Right. All right. Okay. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.